Medicare for all. By the way, how does how do people afford their health care? I don't, I don't understand. Uh, pe- people's premiums have doubled in the last five years. Yeah. Uh, and you wonder why they didn't vote for Hillary? People's, people's health care went up 25% in October before the 2016 election. So October 2016, people's health care went up 25%. Did their pay go up 25%? Well, I bet people that go bankrupt because of health care bills, the last thing they say is, I wish there was an incremental way to solve this. <laughs> I wish there was a solution not commensurate with our, the size of our problems. <laughs> <laughs> we do. They get to do a GoFundMe. Yeah. Mm. And that so, solves all your health care problems. So, so here, here's uh, someone with all the health care in the world kind of being gleeful that you ain't going to get any. People who have health emergencies can't wait for us to have some theoretical debate about some better idea that will never, ever come to pass. Never, you are never, ever getting what the rest of the world takes for granted. Ever. (laughs) You got that? Now fucking vote. I like how she was cryptic about what it actually was. Right. Because yeah. if she wasn't, everybody would have been like, wait, that's what every other industrialized nation has. The- I think theoretical. it will come to pass. It's, a th- it's theoretical. Mm. You know how when you, go, when, you, when you get sick in Canada, in theory, you go to the doctor. <laughs> you why, does actually- she, why does she sound mad at us? Yes. That we want Medicare that for we all. would want a better health care system. And she, it's like she's just admonishing me for wanting something better for other Americans. I don't know, but I want everyone to see that nice mug. <laughs> Holidays. <laughs> right? What do we get? The spreadsheet, right? Okay. Um, that's just kind of a maniac way to say it. Like, yeah, I'll never. Yay. Fuck you. You'll always be worrying about medical bills. Go fund me. <laughs> that's isn't the- it shocking that when I speak, <laughs> my numbers go down? Is, isn't it shocking? <laughs> She's that, like one of the most unpopular, popular people. She's the most unpopular, popular president ever. <laughs> she was. She's the. She's the most unpopular, popular vote president ever. <laughs> uh, well, why do I show you that, everybody? Because here's from the Wall Street Journal: Hillary will run again, and this is written by Mark Penn, her longtime top advisor. So listen to this. So I will. I'll just pick out a couple of paragraphs. From his uh, from this article, uh, claims of Russian conspiracy and the unfairness of the Electoral College shielded Mrs. Clinton from ever truly conceding she had lost. Um, how about this? I re- rewrote that for him. Claims of Russian conspiracy and the unfairness of the Electoral College, as well as lacking any self awareness whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> a Green Party candidate who garnered 1% of the vote and an actress who cares about the environment shielded Mrs. Clinton <laughs> from ever truly conceding she had lost. <laughs> there was a lot more that con- that shielded her. <laughs> I wanted to give you the rest of that. Okay. And, um, boy, Hillary's had so many political... Re- they're, now they're going to say, well, let, let's just keep going. She was robbed, she told herself yet again. But after two years of brooding, including at book length, <laughs> boy, even even her own friends can't help but stick it to her, right? <laughs> even the guy telling her to run is like, even at book length. Well, this whole paragraph sounds like he's getting ready to have an intervention. It does sound like, like it, right? That's totally what it sounds like. But She does- doesn't know she lost. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, don't. <laughs> Zip it. You guys were going to have to, Hillary, if I said we had a plane waiting right now, would you go somewhere where they could convince you you actually lost? (laughs) (laughs) Would you be willing to go tonight for 28 days? (laughs) X-nay on the 16-nay. I love how he says, Mrs. Mrs. Clinton has come unbound. Uh, She will not allow this humiliating loss at the hands of an amateur to end the story of her career. This is Mark Penn speaking in the Washington. Really? Does he really have to, like, y- use been... the term humiliating loss? Come on. It's humiliating. 
So <laughs> you can expect her to run for president once again, Mark Penn says. Maybe not at first. When the legions of Senate Democrats make their announcements, I'm going to guess about 14 of them are going to run. <laughs> but That's definitely, I, they're, they're saying Sh- uh, Sherrod Brown is going to run now. They're saying Elizabeth Warren, Sherrod Brown, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders is. Uh, but she definitely, by the time the primaries aren't full swing, she'll be running. This, according to her, one of her longtime advisors. Mrs. Clinton has a 75% approval rating among Democrats. Where where did you get that number? Where did you get that number? 75%. I don't know. He didn't link. There wasn't a link. This is just in his article. But it's in the Wall Street Journal, so you know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> she has a 75% approval rating among Democrats. Are, are they saying Democrat donors? Is uh, that maybe it? the donors. An unfinished mission to be the first female president. And a personal grievance against Mr. Trump, whose supporters pilloried her with chance of lock her up. This must be avenged. Boy, that really bothered them. her, the lock her up chant. I didn't know that really bothered but that really did bother her. Isn't that weird that that bothered her? Yeah, I mean, this is my first hearing that it bothered her. But I think the 75% refers to... Democrats that subscribe to the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Yes. So people that are just like, yeah, we approve her. She'll lose again. We're, we're in. Expect Hillary 4.0 to come out swinging. 4.0. God, have we had enough? <laughs> <laughs> she has decisively to win those Iowa caucuses. Uh, she has decisively to win those Iowa caucus goers who have never warmed up to her. They will see her now as, this is according to Mark Penn. They will see her now as strong, partisan, left-leaning, and all Democrat. How? How is she any of those things? I, I don't, How is she left-leaning? I she don't know why. She doesn't even want to give us health care. I don't, I don't know why. And that couldn't be a more winning platform than you're going he to did. give us Medicare for all. For She was for, she was for uh, Medi- Medicare for some. <laughs> that's, her, that's her position, Medicare yeah. for some. Isn't this exactly what they said about her the first time, too? I, well, like, he's like just making it up. Yeah. It seems like he's just, like you said, where is he getting the... Is he's just making it up <laughs> that she's going to be seen as strong, partisan, left-leaning, and all Democrat. Experience. Exactly. That's what they said the first time. The one with the guts, the experience, and steely-eyed determination and defeat. People don't vote for that. Steely-eyed. Steely-eyed determination to That's defeat Mr. Trump. That's how I always Trump. cast my she, vote. Are they steely-eyed? Does she have a steely-eyed determination? <laughs> Did she, so she didn't have a steely-eyed determination the first time to beat Donald Trump, but now she has it? She has had two years to go over what she did wrong and how to take him on again. What she did wrong was be Hillary Clinton. There ain't no getting around that. There ain't no getting around that. Well, she ran on a conservative platform in the Democratic Party. Maybe, (laughs) I mean, she's a conservative. What makes her a Democrat? What makes her left-leaning? Well, I don't know, Steph, because she did get around being Hillary Clinton. As the article told us, this is Hillary (laughs) 4.0. Right, right. Uh, This is from from 2008. It is a critical question. Whether it's fair or not fair, the fact of the matter is uh, that my colleague from, from New York, Senator Clinton, they're 50 percent of the American public that say they're not going to vote for him. I'm not saying anything that people don't know already. I don't necessarily like it, but those are the facts. We as a party certainly have to take that into consideration. So that's back in 2007. They knew that. They knew that. And he says the party's got to take that into consideration. Guess what the party didn't do? Take that into consideration. That half the country just isn't going to vote for her. I'm not saying anything that's new. World, It is a critical question. Whether it's fair or not fair, the fact of the matter is uh, that my colleague from from New York, Senator Clinton, they're 50 percent of the American public. They say they're not going to vote for her. I'm not saying anything that people don't know already. I don't necessarily like it, but those are the facts. We as a party certainly have to take that into consideration. That's Dodd from Dodd-Frank. That's who that is. So this idea that is is wrong, uh, that somehow people are going to see her in a different way. It's just, 
Hillary Clinton's numbers never go up when she campaigns. Ever. In the history of her being a candidate for Senate, her numbers always go down. The more she campaigns, the more her numbers go down, which is why some people think she didn't go to Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. She didn't go to Wisconsin and Michigan on purpose because they knew that. They knew it was neck and neck, and if she goes somewhere, her numbers go down, which is why she was in Texas and Arizona. This is a, I'm not making this up. You know who I first heard this from? It was Lawrence O'Donnell first pointed this out years ago. And he showed the numbers of when she ran for Senate. When she starts campaign, her numbers were as high as they could be when she got into the race. And then the more she campaigns, the more her numbers go down. And let re, let's remind everybody, Hillary Clinton, this is from a Gallup poll from October 1st. Hillary Clinton's favorability with U.S. adults is unchanged from last November, remaining at a record low. So to get her numbers up, she needs to go away for a while. Because when Hillary Clinton goes away, her numbers go up. But she's stayed in the spotlight for the last two years, which is why that. This isn't a Rubik's Cube. She's got tons of baggage. She's done lots of bad things to people. NAFTA, exploding the prison prop population, super predators, the bank deregulation, calling half the country deplorables. She's got lots of baggage. People don't like her. How could that how could this be true? And then that 75, oh, 75 percent of Democrats. That's because only 26 percent of Americans consider themselves Democrats. That could be it, too. Yeah. So if she's popular with with uh, 75 percent of Democrats, that's only like maybe 20 percent of the, the country. But this says 36. So that's given her something. I'm saying it by my theory. He took that from like Wall Street Journal subscribers because they're just like, if she runs our tax, our tax bracket will be protected. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here He goes on to say this is and this is always a bad argument. Uh, Richard Nixon came back from his loss to John F. Kennedy. Yes, she could be the Nixon of the Democratic Party. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he will be the model for winning again. Miss, Mrs. Clinton won't travel the country in a van with Uma Abedin, this time doing small events and retail politics. Instead, she will enter through the front door, mobilizing the army of professional women behind her, leveraging her social networks and raking in donations. Especially that last one. Especially <laughs> donations. Well, she certainly won't campaign on any platform. No. I mean, that's what it's really saying. Right? This is, this is I'm going to be dependent on this army of professional women that will leverage come on. This is this is all show. This is this, this is a press release. She will hope to emerge as an unstoppable force <laughs> to undo Mr. Trump. No, she was stoppable. She was very st she got stopped by Trump. A political novice game show host. She got stopped. She's stoppable. She will hope. To, she will hope. To, hope to emerge as unstoppable force to undo Mr. Trump running on the hashtag Me Too movement. That she doesn't care about. That she doesn't care about because, well, her husband. Did you see the shit she just said again? She can't shut up about it. She's Monica Lewinsky was no victim, mm. she said. That kind of goes against the hashtag me too. There's a power dynamic. She's a 21-year-old intern. He's the most powerful guy in the world. A lot of people have a hard time with that, right, Steph? Yeah. I'm asking a woman. Well, you know, because she and and Monica Lewinsky has come out and she said that she didn't feel like a victim, but I I have a different point of view. Like if you're a young woman and you are with the president of the United States, who supposedly is supposed to be irresistible in an office situation, he's commanding. He's pulling out his, his pecker in an office situation, in a work environment. The most powerful man in the world. Right. Hmm. The most powerful jizz of the world with his presidential pecker. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Uh, she's going to be running on hashtag Me Too movement. Universal health care, not Medicare for all. Fuck your universal health care. Do you know how much people have to pay for goddamn health insurance? Twenty, it's like twenty grand just for two people. Why is it that family the de- of four like thirty grand? Why is it the Democratic Party can't get on board with one <laughs> mode of health care? Have you noticed? Yes. Here in California, through the United States, now universal. They they have no platform. Proud and independent, this time she will sideline Bill and Mr. Obama, limiting their role to fundraising. Can can I add one more thing that I've noticed is omitted? What? Nothing about peace. Nothing about no, a jobs program. No, there's nothing about nothing. Nothing about nothing. The status quo, that's what that is. That's that's status quo. That's we're not going to make your life better. We're going to keep it where it is. Universal health coverage. That's what Barack Obama pl- promised. That's what he claimed he gave us. But, but but 29 million people don't have health care. And the people who do have it don't access it because their deductibles are so high. Hillary 4.0. The status quo just got status or quo Status or quo Uh There's more to this. The generation of Democrats who have been waiting to take over the party from the Clintons will be fuming... That she is back and stealing their show, but they revealed themselves to be a bungling to be bungling amateurs in the Brett Kavanaugh nomination fight with their laughable Spartacus moments. The the people who were taking on Kavanaugh was supposed to be the Senate Chuck Schumer, and they didn't. I don't know what the f this person's talking about. Chuck Schumer was the one running that show. The Wall Street toady. What are you talking so are about? So they, are they trying to imply that them and the Clintons aren't on the same team? Is that the I stretch think, they're going for? I, I think they're, try, they're, she's, they're trying to make it look like... It, to me, it makes trying to make it look like it was the Bernie wing that screwed up the Kavanaugh nomination. Mm. How could that possibly be? Well, it's not. I mean, he's just making yeah, that up. Yeah, he's just making that up. So he's just making this stuff up. I mean, he was right on point until now. This is the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't think right? I don't think anybody's fuming. I think we're I'm not fuming that she's considering to run again. I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. Right. Are I'm, you out of your mind? Do you think flummoxed. we want you? How about, How, we're not fuming. We just can't believe that flummoxed. you would do this again to us. I'll say it again. Flummoxed. <laughs> We're not, we're not fuming, flummoxed. Uh, listen to this. This is I, this has to be. He can't mean this. <laughs> he had to be writing this stuff as a joke, because he goes on to go. She will trounce them. Just as Mr. Trump cleared the field, Mrs. Clinton will take down rising Democratic stars like bowling pins. <laughs> Mike Bloomberg will support her rather than run, and Joe Biden will never be able to take her on. Okay, okay, okay. You understand she lost to Trump, right? You understand she lost to Barack Obama first. You know, it's almost like that this opinion was written a couple years it's ago. It's just weird. <laughs> yeah, right? Don't pay much attention to the I won't run declarations. Mrs. Clinton knows both Mr. Clinton and Mr. Obama declared they weren't running until they ran. And, sh- and she did too. And so did she. She may even skip Iowa and enter the race later. But rest assured that one way or another, Hillary 4.0 is on the way. Wow. (laughs) Look out for the new progressive Hillary, everybody. (laughs) Uh, As foreshadowed by Wall Street Journal and as seen in a Goldman Sachs speech that it's not accessible to you. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's a real article. I I think... (laughs) I mean, it's in the Wall Street Journal. It isn't. I checked. It's not April Fool's, right? No, it's it's freaking November. Yep. I thought it was April Fool's. No, this is real. This is this is really real. (laughs) These are the people who are in control of the party, by the way. The people who think like this. These are your Nera Tandons. These are your Jennifer Palmieri's. These are your uh, Coke. Uh, the the uh, George Soros's is these are your uh, your no neck Klubecks. 
These are the, the, the donor class. I'm talking about the billionaire donor class. This, this, is, this is how they think. This is how the consultants think. We'll just look at who he listed. Bloomberg, Biden. Right. Well, if not them, then Clinton. That's yeah. the bubbly stuff. Didn't in. mention Bernie. Exactly. It's just amazing. It's like she's trying to wear us down. Like all of a sudden we're like, oh my God. Yeah, right? 2024. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Could you just make her president and make her go away? She's like those scooters. You can't get rid of them. <laughs> they just keep turning they up. They just keep turning up. What is going on? I tried to round them up. They're there. I tried to see, see that South Park where they had the scooters. <laughs> Okay, there you go. Mark Penn, Wall Street Journal. Oh, boy. Uh, she's had so many political rebrands, Hillary. It's almost like she's just saying what she thinks she has to say to win and doesn't actually stand for anything, right? I mean, come on. <laughs> All right, go get him. Go get him, Hillary. She's I'm with her. Fire. Fire. Hillary, you, I say Hillary, you say fire. Hillary, fire. champion. Champion. And that, I really feel sorry for that woman. She's really trying. <laughs> she's jumping up and down. And, she, and you know she's not getting paid for that. <laughs> oh, good luck. That's a, that's a Hillary Clinton rally. Those are people who showed up for her and they couldn't give a shit. And one of the dudes is in a Bernie shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with her. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice.